Hi all my beautiful people. Uh, here I am again uh, coming to you from Denmark where I live. Some of you ask the new people who come where do you live? I live in Denmark. My name is Katrina and I'm nearly 58, 57 years old and I live on this small farm uh, on an island called Zeeland in Denmark and I have been on a pretty <laughs> pretty intense journey I think from uh, from the moment I was born I think and life has been uh, very uh, really really very very wonderful I feel I feel this has been uh, a really really amazing life and it still is an amazing life so yeah apparently this is a video about my just my journey so let's just see what happens so I was born in Sydney Australia in 1963 and I had an I have an older brother and my mother and father uh, were Danish my mother's still alive, she's Danish, and they uh, lived in Denmark and had my big brother, and uh, everything was changing in the 60s, and the world, Australia, South America, they wanted all this uh, growth, and they wanted people who were, were innovative to come and get things moving, so my father was an uh, he was a furniture uh, builder or wood wood craftsman and also an architect and so uh, my mother was um, had trained to be a um, designer or somebody who makes clothes designs uh, yeah and cuts the material and, yeah. so they met each other on this art school and so he was given the opportunity to go to South America or to go to Australia and they chose to go to Australia and so he wanted to start this incredible career and he did like what happened was as many many in mo many many families is that uh, <laughs> people they come into these marriages with all their baggage and all their hurt from childhood and they get uh, they go on this wave of making money and becoming famous and all this and then they neglect their family and not because they want to because that but that is what happens and um, my mother and father had uh, one more child they had a, my little brother and by then it was really quite unhappy already and my my father met another woman and my mother was very unhappy already and so they they parted and when I was about seven years old my mother chose to go back to Denmark to live with me and my two brothers and so I got to I didn't know the, the language Danish so I couldn't speak the language but I could sing a little song and I'll sing it for you now Tingelingele dot sin solte da blume tros og bum lum lum Se til højre, se til venstre, hele regimentet drejer om Nu, nu er klokken blevet mange, så må vi se at komme hjem Ellers bliver vor moder bange, tingelingele dot om igen I could sing that and I didn't know what it meant It was about some soldiers who were marching along and uh, so anyway I got to know what that was all about uh, because I learned the Danish language at school so at that time there were not many foreigners in in the Danish schools so we were given a very wonderful treatment me and my brothers so we were taken out in um, uh, when we, there was uh, gymnastics and religion I think it was the two subjects we were taken up into a little place and we were taught Danish so uh, when you're so young you learn language very quickly but my uh, my birth tongue or what you call it is English and so that's one of the reasons why I do these videos in English because I love speaking English 
um, but also because, of course, uh, I know that by speaking English I can reach many more people. Many more people can understand what I'm saying. So we are only 5.5 million or something in Denmark people, so very few people speak Danish. So, what can I say? I went to high school. I did my. I was. I, I loved going to school, and I think it's because there was a lot of um, emotional uh, stress in my home, and and there was not much. Or I sort of. Uh, I missed having parents who were actually uh, told me what to do. <laughs> so it's very the opposite of very maybe American young people who are told what to do by their parents. I wasn't told what to do by my mother because she was not a very authoritarian person. So I actually missed having, I, I felt in a way I was the authorities often. So um, uh, so I loved going to school because school there was a lot of structure and I was, the school then was very, um, it was actually very, uh, uh, it was very creative and uh, this was in the in the 70s, the beginning of the 70s. Uh, in Denmark, we had realized that you have to meet the child where it is, and you have to do a lot of creative things because all children are different. And so we, um, when we spoke to our teacher, it was always by the first name. So there was uh, in Denmark very quickly. Uh, everybody was uh, there was there was no hierarchy often. And so it was. Your teacher was like your friend in a way, and I loved the whole thing, the whole system, and I loved expressing myself, and I loved learning all these different things. We did sewing and knitting, and and um, lots of crafty things, music, lots of singing, and I love learning the language, and uh, I love words. I've always loved to express myself with words, so I loved school, and also because it 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 was. Uh, um, predictable. You always knew that this was was what was going to happen and so that was it's very a uh, safe place for me. And I did my high school training and then I felt the pull to go to Australia again. I had been once at, uh, when I was 11 with my little brother we went to visit my father and his new wife and their two little babies. Um, and I felt a very a very big wish to get to know my father because of course I had missed him deeply all my childhood and uh, I wanted to get to know him and he emotionally it was very difficult for him with the divorce and so he in a way he, he just felt he had to close off and so he started a new family and felt that that and, and having that and having his work was really enough so he not that he didn't want to talk to me but he just didn't do much to keep the connection going so I knew that I had to do whatever was needed so and my mother had actually uh, become friends with many many people and some of them were it was a, a minister in Sydney who was actually a type of a uh, couples therapist where my mother and father went for a while while they before they divorced and this was a very young man I think he was in his he was 27 or something and he was a Christian minister there and him and his fat when my mother divorced he became very close t to my mother and uh, and or my mother his family were very friendly and loving towards my mother and my mother became a christian and uh, he later became a sheep farmer with his wife and three kids they went to uh, Ca the canberra region and became a sheep farmer and when I was talking to my mother about going to Australia, she said, how about you go to the sheep farm and you can go and work for them and maybe help them and learn some things. And so I planned my trip. I was going to do some flute playing because I, I learned the flute. And so I had different things I had planned I wanted to do. And I had an old girlfriend who was my, like a neighbor, who she and her mother and father, were, we became very, very close to. It was like family. So I was going to visit my father and his new family. I was going to the sheep farm, and I was going to live, um, going to visit my old friend, who was my age. So it was all planned, and I went when I was 18, and I stayed three years altogether. I came back once, and then I went back. So I was there almost three years, and I got to. I learned so much, and also I had a lot of time. 
I actually have always enjoyed being alone and I think it was very important for my my whole growth, inner growth, that I was very connected to me. <coughs> and I was I'm not <laughs> not very good at working being a part of big groups and, and sort of um, uh, following all the rules, all the strict rules, I like to sort of go a little bit my own way. So it was very very good for me. And I got to, I got, uh, the, the, the family on the sheep farm, they took me in their arms. I've, I've experienced that many times in my life because I missed having a mother and father. Every time a couple would be, show their love to me, I would sort of throw myself into the arms of those people and just, just feel how having a mother and father is. Not that it was my mother and father, but this ha has happened many times. Even in my 40s, I met a couple who were born the same year as my, uh, my own father and mother, and they were actually also Christians, and they took me into their arms too. And uh, it's just happened many times, but this sheep, sheep farmer family with their three little kids, it was, it was just like stepping into heaven. Because where I had been with my mother, Although my mother is a very, very beautiful person and did her very, very best to be a good mother, it was, it was, uh, our life was very full of fear and it was always fearful and nervous. And, um, and nature, I didn't really, was not connected to nature really. I didn't know anything about nature because I grew up in a flat more or less. So uh, coming to the, the sheep farm with all the animals and all this love that was given to me, it was really, really special and very healing. And I remember thinking to myself, if only he was my father, that would be great. And I went to visit my own father and his family and it wasn't really easy, but uh, I got to love my father. That was a process I went through where I got to... Uh, uh, yeah, my father was a like a big sort of bear man, and he would give the the most beautiful, uh, warm hugs, and he was he was very authentic, really. <laughs> he just uh, uh, could be really rude and really a uh, real racist and all sorts of things that you would really want to criticize. But but uh, I could see that behind all that was this beautiful warm heart, and so. And I can see that I look, I'm like him in many ways, and I just got to really love him. So it was very, 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 very wonderful. But I couldn't stay with them for a long time, but I could stay at the sheep farm for, <coughs> for longer times, because there's lots of space and lots of things to do. And that's where I learned to milk a cow and look after sheep and those things. So what happened then? I came back to Denmark and I felt I, I had to do some sort of education and I felt I, felt I wanted to do it for my mother's sake because to, 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 uh, so she wasn't disappointed or something. And I just felt I had to do it. And so I started studying occupational therapy and I really did my best to do it, but I, I really could sense more and more that I couldn't see myself in a, in a in a hospital situation with a name tag and a little nurse <laughs> nurse gear, little name tag fitting into the hospital system. I couldn't do it because I was too creative and I I thought my thoughts were too much out of the box. So I thought to myself, if I'm ever going to work with sick people, I want to help them uh, prevent disease. And if they are to heal their disease, I want to help them heal naturally. So I, I had to leave. I had to leave that place. I, I was. I felt sick when I was at that school. I just. It was so bad. So, I left the school, and was a little bit lost. I had actually before I left the school. I had. I had moved. I was living with my in my mother's flat, and uh, uh, had actually married an Australian guy, uh, a surfer. And uh, we married so that he could live in Denmark. We, we were in love, but uh, it was a really quite, quite a not very really happy relationship. But we married, and so we were... And he travelled a lot, so he would come and go. So, but um, I felt I couldn't live with my mother anymore, so I had to find a place to live. So I asked a friend at the occupational therapy school if she knew of any places where I could go or knew of anyone and she said there's a place in Copenhagen where they put up these people go and put up these ads if they have a room to rent uh, to let out and so I went there with her and we went through this um, 
this uh, this uh, book where people had gone and, and put in their advertisements and just this, you know these pages just all or uh, yeah yeah just sort of homemade type of style <laughs> very very old-fashioned and so i saw this uh, uh, this um announcement it was somebody who had a, a couple of rooms in the country in a little old cottage and it was uh, not so far from copenhagen where i was studying and so i i uh, answered that uh, that um what do you call it announcement and it was actually henrik the husband i got later who had that place in the country and so i went there to, and rented it two rooms by him from him and it was a very very beautiful place and um, and very quickly I started falling in love with him which was really messy because I was married to another man and but I couldn't control my feelings because I just I felt so the feelings were so strong I couldn't control myself so I sort of and he had quite a few uh, women in his life <laughs> so it was very very messy but uh, I got up in the line and he picked me. So we got together and I divorced the other man and we got married and uh, had four children. But, but bef and when we had our first child, um, we went to Australia for nearly a year and a half traveling around in a combi van just with our baby. She was two months old when we left and just Henrik and me and the baby in this combi van. And I wanted him to meet all the people who were really my family. It was very important for me that he got to know them. And so we more or less just lived off very little uh, money for that time. And it was very, very, very special uh, and very healing for me because having a, this all this very, very peaceful life with a man, just a man by my side and knowing that he was, he really loved me and I was safe and he, there were no great ambitions like my mother had experienced in there 25 years earlier there was all these ambitions to and and so we were in a different state of mind and also in a different time so what was most important really is was just the nearness and to just be together and enjoy life so <laughs> that's the way we started our life together and it was very 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 special I just remember feeling this is heaven and I just can't believe how how fortunate we are to be able to live this way. And I still wasn't educated. I hadn't finished my education, but I just had this feeling I want to be a mum. And I want to have a, a really, really wonderful family life. And that's really what was developing. So we went to, we went traveling with something called Willing Workers on Organic Farms. And it's, it's still, it's in a way it's changed to what's called work away and it's all around the world but at that time it was only organic farms and you could go and work four hours a day for food and accommodation and we did that many places and met the most beautiful people but also people who were struggling a lot and just got to know about the life on the land and even more than I'd learnt on the on the sheep farm and so uh, uh, we both felt like living on the land when we came back to Denmark and so we bought this little place in 1990 with 11 acres of land uh, and I just fell in love with it straight away. I thought it was really, really special, very romantic and very lovely. So we could live because it was very cheap, so we could live off one income, one small income because my husband is a teacher, he was a teacher and worked at the local school and at that time the school days were very short and this sounds <laughs> really incredible but it was really incredible so because they the school days were sometimes just four hours so he would come home early and we would have lots and lots of time together so we had our three uh, three more babies on here and they were all home births in the in our uh, our corner couch they were all born and the midwife came here and so it was all very very peaceful and calm and very natural so as our children grew up uh, they we, I think we had a very social life with our children's uh, with our family family we were always a lot with our family uh, you know we went to birthdays and Christmas and parties because Henrik's parents lived nearby so we 
often went there. That was a very special thing because I hadn't had much family as a child in Australia and she was like a grandmother to me because she was quite a bit older than me. So it was really, really all, all that I had dreamt of, of as a child really I got in my own life. And so we often had the friends, our kids' friends came over, they could take, they took the bus home, we took our bicycles up to the bus, uh, put them on the bus in the morning, and then they, they were put off on this side of the road, they had to, they had to cross the road in the, in the mornings to go over to the bus, so we had to follow them over the road because it was quite a dangerous road, but in the afternoon they were put off on this side, so they could just uh, drive down this, it's a two kilometre road, down to our farm so they could they were very self-mobile our children with their bicycles and so they often had kids uh, come home to play so there was a lot of children here playing and doing sleepovers and that was very common so and because we only had a little bit of money we went we used the beach as our holiday so we would go and spend the whole day at the beach which we love so uh, yeah, and our children grew up and uh, more or less ran away <laughs> and uh, they apparently need a lot of time to just not be here and some of our kids want to come and visit us which is really really wonderful and now we are getting older and um, have been divorced the last year. <laughs> I left Henrik because life was it was too difficult emotionally for us and I got to see that what I needed to do was just really pour my love onto him and everything fell into place and into balance so um, yeah so love is the answer and sometimes love is to say no and sometimes love is to leave someone so that's really a lot of my videos have been about trying to understand love myself and also trying to help you understand love. What is love? Because uh, love is really all there is. And the more we are in the love vibe, the more we embrace the love, the more we allow love to pour out of us uh, and fill us, uh, the more everything comes into balance. But it. Uh, as you can see from all my videos and the long journey I've been on, it's not easy. <laughs> Learning how to love and what love is, is not easy. And, um, yeah. So uh, it's been a really, really, really wonderful life and uh, very, very exciting and a lot of pain and a lot of joy. And um, what I feel life has life has taught me many many things and one of the things is that everybody everybody really is a love being and behind all the layers of pain or bad behavior or what what you whatever you can call it people who are unkind uh, it's behind all the layers there's this beautiful loving being full of wisdom full of peace full of truth so it's really god God within. So where I am right now is just really uh, enjoying being and enjoying that uh, I think every time it's my birthday I think to myself oh my goodness imagine I've had uh, all these years to live on this planet so and I love this planet it's just very very special so this is making me all touched and I love all of you and I thank you for being here on this uh, incredible journey I've had the last seven years on this YouTube which has been uh, such a gift for me because being able to share how you feel and having people respond who can use what you're saying and, and bring back their wisdom and their support has been so special. So thank you, thank you for being there and um, for being you. And so this was a little story about me. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye.